Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 600, Overtime, recorded live on October 17th, 2017. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Dust Storm. And I'm your co-host, Godzilla T. And I'm uh, Vin Warrior. It's very nice to be here today. Yes, we have one of our other staff members on, uh, back on the show, Vin Warrior. Uh, you guys may have seen him posting quite a bit frequently, or recently. There has been a lot of news, a lot of which we'll talk about tonight from the Halo live stream and some other things that have been coming up. And there was a couple of opinion pieces, which I don't know if you noticed, Finn, but it got picked up by a couple other Halo blogs as well. I did. I was very happy to see that. Very, very nicely done. Appreciate appreciate the work that you have been putting out there. Thank you. We've got quite a bit of a full house tonight uh, in the Mixer chat. As of this episode, we're doing exclusively Mixer for the podcast. We are going to be still using Twitch and looking at some other different uh, platforms to stream some video on, including YouTube and maybe Facebook for some stuff down the road. Um, But right now we are moving our podcasts specifically over to Mixer so we can take advantage of the FTL technology and the instant feedback in the chat. With it being a talk show, that's kind of important. So we decided to go ahead and make the switch. But we're still going to use Twitch and Mixer together for streams, for gameplay, Frag and Fridays and that kind of stuff. So we're not moving away from Twitch completely. We're just moving the podcast over to Mixer for the foreseeable future. We have a couple of giveaways that are going to be coming out tonight. If we get some, if we break some viewer records, we might give away more stuff. But there, there's at least one big thing that would we'll be getting out a little bit later in the podcast stream. And then there's a lot to talk about from the Halo live stream that happened yesterday. Uh, which would have been the 17th of October. I'm not sure where we should actually start with this, because there was a lot of good stuff that came out yesterday. And with all the different areas of hype and people being interested in different things, it's 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 going to be a little bit nostalgia, a little bit hype in some areas. I don't know. I'll give it to the chat to, to discuss what we want to jump off with first. Over the weekend, we did have the Warzone Turbo and double XP and infection. I missed out on the Warzone Turbo. I wanted to play it, but I didn't get a chance to. Did either of you get to do Turbo at all? No. Yeah, we played it on Friday. Yay! What about you, uh, Vin? Uh, No, I unfortunately didn't get the chance to. Uh, I haven't been able to do much Halo 5 stuff lately, which makes me sad. That's too bad. But it's, it's a lot of fun out there. So Haas wants us to go in order which I don't exactly remember the specific order of the stream from last night, but I know the first thing that was discussed was Halo 5 local server. I find this really interesting. I seem to remember mentioning something about that, oh, about a year and 11 months ago. <laughs> uh, almost 12 months. Almost. Minus three days, right? They come out on the 21st? Something like that. Something like that. Um, Almost two years. I I don't know exactly when, but I did make, I do remember making a comment about it, that they ought to come up with some way for, you know, independent tournament tournament people to be able to have that dedicated local server. Apparently, it was a lot easier than I thought it was. (laughs) So, something that they've been doing, and during the press tours or previews i guess whenever i got to play the games they always had the laptops there to start the servers that was running the the multiplayer session and we've seen that happen through hcs you, if you've been to an hcs event you know that they have infrastructure in the background that hosts the servers locally on a laptop which kind of goes well, they, to show you they were doing that for the championship levels yes right and the official in-person tournament. That's what they were doing. So any of your open lands or the qualifying lands or the world championship series, that was all done off of 
basically what was a local server. It was a specific build of Halo that um, enabled the kits to talk to this laptop and, and now they're just bringing that that whole capability out to the the greater infrastructure. So it's a nice addition. I think it's something that's been long overdue and it's nice to see that the local play is coming back. We're not getting split screen in Halo 5, but to see the split screen coming in Halo 6, we've we've heard of that before. They've they reiterated that yesterday. But as far as having a local server, this is huge for tournaments. This will be huge for uh, the first thing that comes to mind is Griffball Hub for next year doing Griffball tournaments at RTX. And I know they're, they have some big plans for next year, and this will fit right in line with some of the stuff that they want to do. And grassroots tournaments, local tournaments, um, this will be used at the Microsoft Store tournaments. I mean, this this is a move in the right direction. And I hope this is something that they keep through and launch with the development of, of Halo six. Well, you know, with the, the new build of, with Halo six, if they just build in land support into the game, then it would be good and not have to require, you know, and a separate PC to coordinate it all. So I wonder if, why they're pulling that off of, well, I, I mean, there, there is the concern of host advantage on LAN, and that's always been something that's, for lack of a better word, plagued the Halo multiplayer scene. So it's it makes sense to have something that's local to your network, but off take, not taking up the resources of the local console. If you think about it, they're probably trying to pump as much computation power into the game as possible, and if they can offload the the server load onto a dedicated platform on like a Windows computer, then that just makes the experience, I think, a lot better. Yep. I can't speak much on the technical side, but from a logistical side and sort of a fan communication side, I think it's great that 343 has this renewed focus on the stuff that fans want to see, like split screen you mentioned and LAN. Even bringing Halo 5 to PC was something they really didn't need to do, but it shows that they're supportive of the PC community, and that's pretty cool. And there's no indication that this is something that you're going to have to pay for. It looks like something you'll just download and you just host the game. I don't know what the configuration is like. They didn't really go into specifics, but we're going to be getting it here in the fall. So it's, it's not going to be too far out uh, from now that we'll be seeing this on, on Windows 10 for you to download and just launch your own server. And most people these days, I, I'm assuming, are running Windows 10, except if you're Mac then you might be a little out of luck, but I don't see it as much as, as an inconvenience to just download this to your computer and run it. And the laptops that the Halo staff were running was, I think, just like an IBM laptop. It, it wasn't even a powerhouse of things. So you don't even, doesn't even seem like you need that powerful of a computer to actually run this thing. Yeah, on the stream, they said, you, you know, basically a mid-tier PC. You know, you don't have to have a high-end gaming rig. You know, just kind of in the middle of the road, probably, I don't know, with what you can get pre-built computers for, you probably spend about, if you wanted to buy one, five to $600 and get one that would run the, run the application. You could even get something that's, um, it's not like, it's not a Roku box, but it's something that's like it. It's just, just a small PC build, and you can usually find something like that for 300 bucks. And you could probably just run it off of that it doesn't sound it's like it's, not. it's that power intensive well I, I definitely think you need to be on an actual desktop ish processor I don't think it will run on like a, a you know a snapdragon or something like that oh, although no. they've made some really really good improvements on that but you know like in an Intel probably like an i5 or the higher end i3s would probably run it just fine because it sounds like it's it's not really video intensive because they say you can use onboard video. You, you don't need any special error, so probably a you know a decent amount of RAM and a decent CPU and you know basically enough power to feed them. Um, as far as you know what they've showed of the application so far, it does look like they're going to follow their typical Metro app type layout. 
you know, it, it's something that will be downloaded through the Windows Store. It's not going to be your traditional Win32 application. I'm just thinking the streaming PC I have, I haven't really used too much. And I want something that will eventually do Cody anyway, so I'll probably phase that out. But I could use that PC for something like this. Yeah. Just stick it in a closet somewhere, remote desktop into it whenever I want to set up a server. Yeah, just like you're going to set up the, the Halo 1 and Halo 2 PC servers. Yeah. Sorry, had to bring it up. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. There's a lot of but things yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, if, you, <laughs> if me you're right someone now. that does that a lot, then yeah, definitely. It's worth having a dedicated PC for it. You know, for me, I probably won't ever have the uh, the need to run a land in my own house. So, you know, I probably will download it and install it and play with it. But as far as it being any use for me, no, because most of my friends have moved moved away from video games. Well, you know, that kind of happens when you get into my decades of age. <laughs> uh, you're not old. Age is just a number. I, I didn't say old. I said True. older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's I'm glad they did it. It's something that will be useful to a sizable chunk of the community, especially competitive. It would be nice if there were, if this was available to do like a internet based server, kind of like how we do like take the Halo Bowl, for example. If we had a server like that, we could we could control the settings a little bit that way i'm probably you could probably rig a vpn or something to use it like that well and i mean you're already using azure servers anyways when you're doing a custom game so it's not like you would necessarily have to do it well i mean the main focus of the program is to eliminate the internet drop you know for gameplay is to eliminate that problem of the internet internet blinks and somebody gets kicked out of the game and xbox live goes down <laughs> yeah i mean that's the main focus of this app it's not really designed it's not designed to be a replacement for xbox live and that's anything right. you know if you start looking at trying to access this server over the internet well you're basically dealing with xbox live but on on a genuinely smaller scale and i you know me personally i don't think i could build a robust network enough to compete with xbox live <laughs> it's still nice to have it, it just for like a land perspective and i'm hoping uh because i'm gonna have a land party as my bachelor party for the most part so for playing halo 5 this will be perfect this will be really nice to have Sounds like an awesome bachelor party. It's gonna be gonna be a possibly like an all day land party type of thing. Jeez, that's great. That'll be nice. Board games, video games. Too bad I'm so far away. Yeah, you can drive. So yeah, Just not. take a weekend. <laughs> I don't think I can make it there in twelve hours. Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd be stretching it if you're getting to twelve hours. You'd be close, but if I made it there in 12 hours, I'd be in jail. Only if you got caught. (laughs) Sure. Right. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. How many thousand miles is that? How many cops are between here and there? (laughs) Got to add a little disclaimer. Potaco does not endorse any illegal activities of any kind. (laughs) No, we don't. We do not endorse them. (laughs) Doesn't mean we don't perform them. We just don't endorse them. Um, but <laughs> I think I think it's really good that they did that. And I think it's cool that they did that. And, you know, everything in this stream. Now, granted, I didn't get to watch the stream live and I've only watched about 80 percent of the replay. But everything I found so far is it's really community based. And that's important. Agreed. It is. I mean, they are addressing a lot of problems that the community has been complaining about for the last two years. Yeah, and there's a there was a couple of surprises in there too, which we'll we'll get to. But this Halo Five local server is a good step in the right direction, and I know for a few of the stuff that's a few of the items that's on 
that was talked on the stream, there's a lot of people out there is like they, they should have had this from the beginning. And yeah, well, it would have been nice to have it from the beginning, but hey, we're getting it now. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. It's true. Gotta give Sketch and the entire team just a round of applause. Yeah, they did a really good job with the stream and having everything that they talked about was was great. It was it was a probably one of the better streams I've seen from them so far. Oh yeah. And, and Graham just, like just shot the approval rating through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during the the product part. Yeah. There are so many memes or snap snippets and gifs I think that came out of just that segment alone because it's grim. Well, yeah, it's grim. There, there's always going to be <laughs> um, gifts that spawn from him showing up on a stream. Him in the shades broke the internet. Yeah. The only thing I've ever, I've noticed about this stream is they still haven't quite figured out the audio. I know. I was, it's I either was too say loud or too that. quiet. I was going to say something about that. Their production quality needs a little more work and, and the lighting in that studio with the camera exposure that still needs some tweaking. But again, again they're, a, they're a studio that makes video games, not videos. <laughs> I, I think they would benefit from hiring a professional to come in and at least set the thing up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, hire a consultant. They might. I don't, I don't know. Depends on how often they want to do it. Because like, that, you'd be paying quite a bit of money to have someone come in and set these streams up. It's Microsoft. They got the money. I'd be willing to give them some tips. <laughs> and a lot of this stuff is just like take 10 minutes to just check a couple of things and you're good to go. It's, there's not even complicated things. I mean, you see how well the ESL quality and their lighting and their audio and everything. It's like just need to tweak a little, a few things on, on the Halo live stream. Just microphone positioning and gain and all that stuff and really doesn't take that much you have you have a studio full of audio devs you have production crew i mean well you know the video i can kind of understand but yeah they have they have a studio full of audio engineers that would be able to figure out audio <laughs> exactly but yeah it was a, Sorry, I, I did like the format of the stream it was it was cool how they did it just you know the the order that they did things was cool i liked you know, the overall layout of the stream was good. All the information was great, too. So we have, have we beat the uh, custom server to death yet? I think we have. Okay. It would be interesting to see what the configuration options are. If it's something where you join the server and then you configure a custom game, or if you can configure the custom game within the server app and then launch it. So far, what it looks like you know, the way they described it, you basically install the program, name the server, and turn the server on. Then you go into your Xbox, go into the server browser, select the server to connect to it instead of Xbox Live, and then you run it just like a normal LAN event. You know, just like old school LAN, you have one person that sets up the game type in the map and controls the start of the game. Okay. Makes makes it simple enough to me. The way they describe the app to me, it just sounds like it's ju all it's there is to handle the traffic between the Xboxes. That makes me... I, I know we're kind of moving away from this, but that makes me wonder, where's the validation checking happening for like map geometry collision and... Oh, it still has to be connected to uh, the internet. Oh, I know. It's still... The server still connects to Xbox Live, but the ser but that's just for the initial check. I'm assuming if like if the Xbox Live goes down and that server was already up and registered, you could still use that server to play games. That's what they made it sound like. Well, that you know that could all be built into that server. I mean, it's you know, that is it's a replacement for Xbox Live, just run locally. You know, it can only take care of local instances. Well, so if you're a traditional game server, you usually have those map files loaded into the, into the server, so the server can actually run and, val and check, validate the different actions that are taking place and do that 
uh, tra- bullet trajectory calculation and, and pr- provide the status updates to all the all the consoles. So um, I mean maybe the app does come with the maps and it's going to be a huge gigantic download. I don't know, and maybe it doesn't. They don't need to be as big because there's just not geometry or uh, textures involved. So maybe it's just the geometry shapes themselves. Probably. I mean, you know, there's, you know, server's going to have to be able to talk to the Xboxes and say, hey, you, you can't walk there. You know, if you shoot there, the bullet's going to stop at this point. But a lot of that is, you know, I I don't know how much of that is handled by the Xbox and how much it's actually handled by the servers. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure either. Because I didn't develop the game. <laughs> It'd be, well, maybe we'll get a little more information on how it works later down the road, or maybe we can try to. Sure, we'll get a lot of information questions. on how it works once it launches. Well, but I mean, like the technical intricacies of how that server specifically runs. Possibly. All right, shall we move on? Sure. Sure. All right. Next up is the competitive team skins so the hcs team skins there are three new ones that are going to be launching this fall they are straight ripping luminosity and splice uh it sounds like uh there's been quite a bit of hype for all three i know straight ripping is one of the classic ones back from the mlg days of, of competitive halo and there's actually been quite a bit of um just from the little bit I've seen from people tweeting that are kind of into the competitive side of things, um, some love for the, the splice design and the, the luminosity design. I like the straight ribbon just from the nostalgia standpoint, but the luminosity one, I like, like the, the blues in that one, the, the luminosity logo itself kind of is a little weird. I mean, it makes sense just because that is their logo, but, just the design that's on the AR and the Magnum for Luminosity's colors and designs. I just really like that one. I think out of, out of the out of the three. So that's, I mean, there's nothing really more to say about the skins. We do have also the country skins for esports. So America, UK, Australia, Canada, Mexico. That is true. Jumping a little bit out of order, but yeah. So we also have the five country skins and it's probably safe to assume that there'll be some other ones getting added there down the road as um, other countries come in and uh, compete. But um, they have the five main countries that I guess have the, the majority of the competitive halo population. So you have the U S and Canada, obviously representing the kind of the U S area Canada kind of falls in there mostly. Then you have Latin America, which is represented by Mexico. Then you have the UK and then Australia. But the, well, it's good that the other, you know, other countries are able to represent their nation's colors or something like that in the game. I mean, you know, we've had American themed weapon skins in the game already. I mean, personally, I run the Eagle skin on the, uh, AR, so yeah, it, it's good to put stuff like that in there. And I think especially when you have teams with skins already in there, you have a lot of the international teams coming in, especially for Worlds, and you want to be able to have them represent and have people online represent their um, and support their their teams that way. So, while they're not going to be team-specific skins, at least they're there's another way to show support for their teams coming from different areas of the world. Plus it makes it easier to figure out whose weapon you're picking up. Oh, (laughs) that too. Oh, They just died here. (laughs) Yep. Next up on the list is oddball is making a return. I got to play this a little bit during PAX West and it was a lot of fun. There was one game that was a nail biter. I can't remember what the, the final score was, but I I think it was a one fifty to one forty nine game. That's a close game. Wow, yeah, it's crazy. It's so much fun. I am so happy that this is back and it's what I'm considering proper form with the with the skull. 
and they have the new announcer voice to, to go with the some of the oddball cues, but it's its own dedicated game mode now without the creating the ball game type that's that has the oddball rules. This is officially oddball. Wait, you said new announcer voice? I'm confused. They just record new audio or Yeah, they record new lines. Okay. Yeah, new lines. Same announcer, new lines. Oddball. Play ball. Ball reset. Ball taken. Ball reset. <laughs> and the uh, throwing mechanic is absent from this version as well, right? So if you decide to go with the, the skull, and you have the custom options to enable throwing or disable throwing, that yeah. kind of stuff. I don't know if if you choose the skull, if there's something where you where that automatically disables throwing or whatever, but that is an option that you can probably set and you can go back and still have a ball type. That is the ball. So you can throw it, but I'm guessing with the skull, you probably wouldn't be able to. It's pretty interesting. I think if you do throw it, it ought to fly off in just some odd, weird angle. <laughs> and then like bounce around because it's the, the, the weird shape of the skull. Uh huh. That'd be and cool. I have to admit that skull looks pretty wicked too. Oh, it does. Well, I think it's the same skull from the campaign mm, no that one's a lot better looking <laughs> um they probably updated it since i'm guessing i don't know i have to go back and look at the skull specifically in campaign and see if they updated textures to it yeah i remember the skulls in campaign you can't hardly see the dang things because they're so freaking small and you can't pick them up <laughs> true note to 343 in halo 6 make sure we can pick up and carry the skulls and beat enemies with them. <laughs> that doesn't seem physically possible. Eh? Did anyone else catch the reference? Please? Okay, Bobby said he did. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, poor Jimmy. Yep. Okay, next thing up on the announcement list is the Halo World Championship returning in 2018. I think we pretty much assumed that was going to be the case. So starting in January, that will be the road to the Halo World Championship Series for the North American, Latin American, European, and Australian uh, corners of the world. I think, did they announce Africa as well? I can't remember. Not uh, sure. I don't remember them saying Africa. I don't think they did, but if they did, someone in the chat correct me. So that's going to take place in January and we'll probably see a finals in March or April. I'm hoping I can make it out there. Hopefully it doesn't conflict with another important date that I can't miss. Yeah, that one you don't want to miss. No, that one I, I can't miss, which kind of sucks. Th that one you'd probably be paid for for a long, long time. Yeah. The, the only thing is because <laughs> I asked uh, Uni and John and Bravo if they were available and they said the weekend that we had planned is usually the weekend that they have worlds. <laughs> yeah. So maybe the way to go to rest. I, I know. Right. Wonderful planning on that, on that point. And it was probably your idea, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they'll squeeze it around. I don't know. I mean, if, if three of their people that are normally there happen to make plans to be somewhere else, maybe they'll schedule it around. I don't know, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but tradition, they said traditionally it's been the last weekend in March. So we'll, we'll see what that happens. We'll, or we'll see what happens with that. Technically the, the 30th, 31st and April 1st would be the last weekend in March. So maybe they'll move it back to that. That'd be interesting. Having, the championship Sunday be April Fool's Day. Yeah. I can see all kinds of puns oh, and jokes. That would, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be really funny. Uh, so that's the HCS news that they were talking about. DreamHack Denver is coming up this weekend for the fall finals. So if you're in the Denver area, then you'll have the chance to check out some competitive action. There is a little update for the Microsoft Store tournaments with the coming release of Halo 5 local server. They're going to be having these tournaments at 
all Microsoft stores, which I thought before they were at all Microsoft stores, but apparently they weren't at every Microsoft store. So from November to March, every Microsoft store is going to be participating in the uh, Microsoft store Halo tournaments. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know which stores that excluded before, but I think there was like six stores that weren't doing it. (laughs) I don't know. Six out of the 45 that were. There was a long list of them that were. I don't know which ones weren't, but yeah. Hopefully this time I can actually make it to one of the events. Me too, because the last three I've been busy. So hopefully the one in November is one I can actually go to. Yeah, every time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go this weekend, and something came up. We'll see. It'd be nice to just for me to to go and and watch one and and maybe participate depending on what kind of tournament format it is for that day. But just to go and and see it and maybe support one down the road, maybe throw in a little bit of extra stuff to either give away or maybe throw some money in the pot or something like that. Maybe partner with the one that close to me, which is kind of a bit of a drive. It's about an hour and 20 minutes, I think, of a drive from where I am. Given, yeah, that's not too given bad. no traffic. Yeah, it's it's not that bad. Make it a day trip. It's not that bad. I mean, you know, I know some people, you know, it's six hours to the nearest Microsoft store. That's pretty bad. They just need to build more Microsoft stores. Well, they <laughs> right. first got to get people shopping in them first. Oh. Touche. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. The Microsoft stores are neat, and I have shopped in them. Matter of fact, that's where I bought my current phone. And I also bought a Surface laptop there. But every time I've gone in there, they haven't been abundantly busy. Yeah. I've had the but same I also have to keep in mind they are in a mall. Malls are not <laughs> as popular as they used to be. I mean, the mall was pretty empty, so. Well, no, I've been to the one on West 42nd Street in the heart of Manhattan, and even there was pretty, uh, I'd say maybe 40, 45 people in the place in total, which is sucky. The times I've been in there, I think the most I've seen in ours is five. Are you talking about the one on 51st? Is it 51st? I, I don't remember the exact location. It's it's the one, uh, how many how many Microsoft stores are there in Manhattan? Two. Because, oh. Two or three. What's the other I one? I think two. Uh, I don't remember where the other it one is. It might be 51st. Yeah, I might just, might just confuse the number. Maybe I had to go get a job at a Microsoft store, and then I can just sit around and play with all the new gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could, you could uh, virtually tune up some Forza cars. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, I'm making sure this Xbox is in good shape. <laughs> Got to make sure the Master Chief riding the Scorpion was put there. <laughs> Quality control. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which this came as a probably the biggest surprise out of the night. Master Chief Collection is getting an update. Woo! Yay! Let's let's wait for the chat to come up and and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the the build up in the mixer chat last night was something of legend. Yeah. I mean, people people were and it was Bonnie and Sketch. They were like kind of slowly easing into the conversation and talking about it. And there was a fireside chat that got a little fire video up in the background. <laughs> I thought it was kind of neat. It was kind of cool. It was. Bonnie seemed so nervous though. And, and you know what? You got to approach the subject really carefully. It's it's a scary topic. Especially well, yeah, that, that, subject. that topic is a grenade waiting to go off. Yeah. She handled it really well, though. She did. I mean, kudos to her. And she is one of the sweetest people that you will meet. She is just so down to earth and so nice to talk to. And y- you could tell it's like th- there was a little bit of nervousness going into that segment, but she handled it really well. I don't even watch the Twitch chat anymore because I know that place is just toxic. Oh, yeah. The Mixer chat was... The response in there was great. The YouTube chat, the spot in there, the response in there was pretty good, too. Twitter was like, wait, what just happened? (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) 
So yeah, Master Chief Collection is going to be receiving an update in 2018. It's going to include updates, fixes, and Xbox One X enhancements. Uh, that doesn't mean that's only being fixed for Xbox One X. It's going to be fixes for the whole Xbox One platform. And the enhancements for Xbox One X is maybe something up to like a 4K update. That sounds awesome. Can we like hope if this does well that maybe MCC can get a little more content? I know H2A, some people have said like the maps, they, they should do more. I don't know if that's possible, but it would be cool if this gets a positive response. How about bring MCC to PC? That would be cool too. Admittedly, that'd be really cool. Or make it play anywhere. That would, I think, instead of giving it a straight PC port, promote the program. Yeah. Play anywhere. Well, if they did bring it to PC, I'm sure it'd be a play anywhere title. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you bring Master Chief Collection to PC, you will see the PC population of Halo skyrocket. Yeah. Absolutely. It will jump. Trying to imagine what Halo 4 would look like in 4K. Beautiful. I Just don't gorgeous. think so. I really? Uh, ooh. Uh, I don't mm. think upscaling it like that is going to work. <laughs> well, it wouldn't necessarily be an upscaling. They would definitely have to touch up all the textures. Uh, yeah. See, Halo 4, I think the environments would look at least good, though. I don't know about, like, some, I know some of the character models have gotten a little sketchy, like the undersuit for Chief and the rest of this barns looks a little strange, but mm-hmm. I think the environments would look nice. I think you're onto something, though, GT. I, I was thinking about just from a from an armor perspective, there might be some tricky, tricky stuff there. There'd be a lot of touch-ups going on. Yeah, there would be. And the lighting engine would probably have to be tweaked a little bit, too. Why not just make Halo 4 anniversary at this point? I mean... Well, they, they've already shot down Halo 3, so I'm pretty sure they're not going to do Halo 4. Yeah. I know, obviously. It's, <laughs> it's just jokingly, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. get me wrong. I'm happy and sad that there's no Halo 3 anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, to I'm me, happy that there's not one because it doesn't really need one because it's still a relevant game the way it is. It's still playable. Agreed. Where Halo CE and Halo 2, well, Halo 2 wasn't playable, at least as far as matchmaking. You could still do campaign. Halo 1 never had matchmaking. So those I could kind of see, yeah, okay. But, I mean, you have Halo 3 on uh, in the MCC. It would be nice if they brought the full game to Master Chief Collection. You know, didn't leave any little bits out and, you know, make sure that Forge is working like it used to. <laughs> but, you know, with that, I really wish they would find a way to port in all the old maps. You're talking for about Halo like- 3. All the old custom maps. Oh, all the old oh, racetracks. Okay. All the old Indiana Jones maps. You know, the Griff Ball maps, the custom Slayer maps, all that. Jesus, even thinking about it sounds like a technical nightmare. Oh, I'm sure it is. And, you know, even for the 12-year-old's fat kid. I think the complication of that is because some of the tweaks they had to make to Halo 3, those files wouldn't be able to come over as they are. Yeah. I know. I, I know there's probably all kind, especially with all the phasing and spawn tricks and things that people had to do in halo three, you know, getting the, getting the maps to come into essentially a new engine. I know it's still a halo three engine, but it received a lot of updates and to get those maps to work is gotta be a logistical, logistical nightmare, (laughs) you know, just like the game was, it would be great if they could find a way to do that. That would be sweet. That would be amazing. Connect up that file share. I would really like to see now, especially now that back combat is up, that they bring back the web file browsers for Halo 3 and Halo 4 and Halo Reach. That would be pretty cool. I mean, I know Halo 5 is their baby right now and they want to devote all the resources to it, but I would like to see the web-based file browser again. The thing is, that's 
I think still. I don't know. Is that still connected to Bungie? No. It shouldn't be. Well, I know Halo 4 and Halo Reach aren't. You know, Halo 3, eh, okay, fine. But, you know, when 343 took that all over, they took over that part of the the web as well, or uh, that part, those web assets. But with Reach, I'm confused. Where would you like factors and stuff in? Are you talking about them, like, bringing Reach up with Master Chief Collection, or just No, 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 out? I'm just talking for back come back. Oh, oh, okay. He's just talking about having a web managed file share. I'm gonna be totally honest. I wasn't aware that Back from Pat didn't have the file share and all that working. I was under the well, impression it does that it in game. Oh, oh now right. it's but okay. the file browsers in those games are kind of a pain. <laughs> you know, it's much easier. You know, it's much easier to browse files with a keyboard and mouse on a web page than going through the in-game browser. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's doable. But if you're looking for something specific, it can be kind of hard to find. Not mentioning queuing them up for download. You bring up an interesting point, though, and I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah. And also, you know, if they could do it for the Master Chief Collection, too. So it is there for the Master Chief Collection. No, they need to do a little tune-up on it. Like, sort it by game. Oh. Well, and you can only do... If I remember right, you can only do H2A screenshots. Games. I don't think you can post... Yeah, it's only it's only game clips and screenshots. I'm looking at it right now. Well, with MCC, I think right now 343 is kind of taking things slow, and they want to see, as far as these fixes are concerned, what they do and how the community reacts to it. It's going to be a while before we see anything really for MCC, as, as far as this extra stuff is concerned. Yeah, like I said, this is a wish list. Yeah. Well, and hopefully the stuff that they kind of hinted at yesterday is just working on some foundational issues that has been prevalent with Master Chief Collection. Like, if they can get a lot of that foundational stuff, yeah, there's going to be people that are going to be complaining, okay, get this fixed now, get this fixed now, blah, 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 blah. But if there's just some of those key issues that they get tuned out and tweaked out, then I think they'll have that groundwork to kind of work on getting the, some other things in there if they want to. And to be honest, they didn't have to do this. They didn't have to go back and touch up MCC. But I mean, I know there's some people out there that think that 343 is just in it for the money, but they really do care about the community. And, and I've been around them long enough to know that they they genuinely do care and, and a fair amount of them come from a Halo background and they, they care about what the community thinks because they, they've been in that position before. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I don't really like it when these days a lot of people, instead of criticizing the game, they lump them in with the developers and feel that a game's problems are entirely on the developers not caring or only being in it for the money. And I think that's sort of a dehumanization tactic and it, it bothers me just a wee bit. So don't get me wrong. Microsoft's in it for the money. Yeah, I think most companies... The people at 343 report to Microsoft. So, yes, to a point, they have to be in it for the money. But that doesn't mean they don't care about what they put out. That they don't care about the community. We have gotten a lot of love from 343 over the last few years. Yes, the MCC was a total cluster. The way Halo 5 launched yep. was From not the zero. best. <laughs> but I have to admit, they they have been really engaged with the community. They have really worked hard to fix what should have been there to begin with. You know, arguably. Well, you know, definitely. Should have been there to begin <laughs> with. But they've done a, they have done a lot that the Halo community ha- has never seen before in a game. Yeah. It's been in a Halo game, I should say. Well, and it's also been something that hasn't been done on Xbox Live either. I mean, I think the first kind of glimpse of that was kind of rare replay in a way, but then again, that was just a collection of games. But as far as having everything under one game and one UI, I think on Xbox, Master Chief Collection was the first game to do that 
Sounds about like it was, yeah. Rare Replay is, you know, it's a little different. I mean, it is basically, they just give you, all the games are in the build. They just give you, you know, a central place to launch the games. Where in Master Chief Collection, they really tried to integrate all four games. You know, to where and now you can go games. to one place for the Mac. Well, at the beginning, four games. Right. Well, unless you count Halo 2 twice. But anyway, <laughs> um, the you know they were really wanted to integrate the matchmaking systems of all all those games into one central place. So you could go and you know, you could pick, I just want to do random slayer. Don't care which game. And it would search and you could get a slayer game in Halo CE and Halo 2, Halo 2A, Halo 3, Halo 4. Rare Replay doesn't do that. It just launches single instances of the game. It's a really ambitious project. I don't think people give give 343 enough credit for what they tried to do. Well, I give them all the credit for what they tried to do. It, it's a matter of they really, as a company, weren't developed enough to do it. True. Like, you could tell MCC from the startup was a labor of love because they could have just released H2A that year and frankly called it quits. They would have gotten the money. They would have. They wanted to do something ambitious and incredibly outstanding, which was, to be fair, also what they started off Halo 4 with. They had a lot that they wanted to do, and they didn't really get to do all of it, but they tried. And that's something you gotta commend them for. I mean, you know, the in the Bungie era, well, in Halo CE, there was no update in the game. You got what you got. <laughs> PC got updates, but yeah, the yeah, Xbox PC got did updates, not get updates. But that wasn't really handled by Bungie, I don't believe. I think it was handled by Gearbox, wasn't it? Was Vista Gearbox? Uh, no, Halo 2 Vista was a different studio. But no, I mean, later, the more recent patches have been done by Bungie for Halo PC. Well, yeah. Well, they've been done by Bungie employees, but anyway, not necessarily by Bungie, just people that work there that are still passionate about Halo, um, you know, especially with the servers shutting down for Halo CE. Servers shutting down. Huh? You mean Remember that you had to install a install a patch to migrate the uh, server in Halo CE PC. What do you mean migrate the server? You're talking about like well, out, the, outside of GameSpy. Yeah, it, GameSpy oh. no longer hosts them. Yeah, yeah. So the server directory listing. Right. Right. The Bungie employees got together and created a patch to move that to a different network. Yes. But, you know, going back to Xbox, you know, Halo 2, yeah, you got map packs, which, I mean, for the time were great. I mean, it was great to get downloadable content. It, you know, it was actually cool. And, you know, the packs were cheap. I, I think the biggest pack was, what was it? $15, $10, $15, something like that. I don't remember for sure. Um, I want to say 10, I think. Yeah, like I said, 10, 15 bucks. You know, the smaller ones were like six bucks. But Halo 2 was the first game that was capable of being updated as far as, you know, weapon tuning and thing like that things like that and you know bungie even admits when they first launched halo 2 they got it wrong when it came to <laughs> weapons i did not feel that because i wasn't into halo at the time but i've heard some of the stories oh yeah uh original matchmaking with halo 2 <sighs> <laughs> it would give you a migraine and it's not so much matchmaking times, it's just once you get in the game, the physics of some of the guns just really didn't make sense. You know, some, you know, you could empty the clip and not kill anybody. Some of them, it seemed like you fire twice and they're dead. So, you know, every game developer has issues. Just 343s happen to have some pretty big ones. 
but I do give them kudos for continuing to work on it and continuing to fix it. And having this patch come out next year for MCC shows the, it shows me how much they love the game and all facets of the game and the games that, that have come out before it. I mean, everyone has some particular game or memory on a game that really sticks out to them. And MCC really catered to that. And for them to, to try to pull this together and grant, there was a lot of things they didn't do right on, on this one, but there's, they're still working at it and they, they still hear the concerns from people about wanting MCC fixed. And guess what? Everyone that's been doing hashtag fix MCC. Well, your wishes are coming true. Well, I don't think they ever stopped completely working on MCC. Now, the team responsible for dealing with it has probably been reduced due to the number of projects they've been running lately, um, especially with the development of Halo 6. I'm sure most of the studio is working on that. But I like that, you know, they said, okay, we've got this big thing done for Halo 5. You know, things that we've been needing to do. What do we do next? Well, let's work on MCC. Okay. (laughs) And it really is something they didn't have to do. They didn't have to do the back of Pat stuff either. No, I honestly was really surprised that Microsoft did the back and Pat for those games. It's really surprising because, especially because how long it took them to do them. You know, back and Pat for 360 has been out for a long time. Well, in addition to that, MCC already has those games, and you would think they would want to push the product that's out there for specifically Xbox One. Well, the one that they could actually make money on. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's some money be, to be made on the back and Pat. I know they got some for me because um, I needed to buy the Halo CE Anniversary. Because my disc is unreadable now for some reason. Oh. And so I was going to have to buy another copy of it. So I just figured I'd just buy it digitally. And then I don't have to worry about discs anymore. And then if for some reason you want to go back and play it on 360, you can just download it. Yeah. I just like to see that they still have the love. (laughs) Yes, they do. Same goes for Reach. There's a lot of people out there that still really love Reach. But yeah, lots of nostalgia, I think, for people seeing that MCC is getting a fix and getting some tweaks to be supported on Xbox One X and probably addressing some of the bigger key issues that they, that's they that been plaguing the system. And I mean, it's been a while since they've worked on it. And depending on how big the small team is that's been working on it, Maybe they finally figured out some of the quirks and have been just kind of piling up and it's like, here you go. Here's a nice little update that you can just kind of squeeze on. We've made all these tweaks in the back end without like kind of just being in the back corner, just kind of working away and they got things working. Here's the list of things that we found that's broken. Oh, (laughs) and here's the list that we fixed. And it's like, okay, keep, keep going until we, once, once we get the good stuff out, then we'll tell the community. I feel that that's kind of like I said, I'm sure they've had a a team, a small team working on it, doing research and seeing if they could find ways to fix the most common bugs. I'm sure. Yeah. And what they're going to do is, you know, group them all together and push them all out in one big patch, which that's cool. It is. I think it is. So before we move on, we still have a couple other things left over. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. We do have a giveaway uh, because this is episode 600. We're going to take this up a notch from our traditional giveaways. And we are giving away an entire icon set from the first year of Halo Legendary crates. Ooh, me, 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 me. Oh, wait a minute. I already got one. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're giving away the entire first year of Halo Legendary crate icons figures. So I I put out another tweet saying people need to get in here if they want a giveaway. So everyone that's in here now is going to be eligible for getting the the icon set. So I'll work on the the random number generator here 
uh, while we move on to the next roll. But um, we're going to be giving away something on every stream th through the end of the year. So that is another, I believe, nine giveaways that we'll have. Uh, maybe eight if we if we t take off a week for the holidays. But if not, at least nine giveaways that we'll be doing on the podcast. So maybe up to like cool. six oh nine or six ten. Get free yeah. stuff. <laughs> exactly. So next thing up on the news list, and I'll be giving away the, the icon figures here in, in the moment. Next thing up on the news list is Halo Wars 2 crossplay is going to be coming to Windows 10 and Xbox One. I've heard nothing. I don't know how I feel about decision. that. I guess there's there's the the negative side or unsure side. I, I've heard good things about it, but I mean, yeah. When they originally launched the game, I'm thinking, well, this would be kind of cool. But now that I've actually gotten my hands on the game and I've watched some people playing the game on PC and <laughs> play, you know, I've played it on, I've played it on PC, I've played it on Xbox. Mm, I, I will tell you this: it's not going to be a real competitive type environment, and I don't think it's meant to be. I think the reason that they're looking at this is because there has been such a demand form the community to have the ability to do cross play and you're, you're not going to see a competitive because the well, PC I mean, not competitive as far as professional just I really do think the Xbox is going to be at a disadvantage to somebody playing with keyboard and mouse yes possibly yes but I suck at RTSs anyway so it doesn't really matter <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's just kind of something like that where, okay, someone has it on PC and someone has it on Xbox, and they just want to be able to play with each other. And I know a lot of the... Sorry. I was just going to say, maybe there'll, there'll be a restriction on PC where you have to use controller, or I know there's been discussions about supporting mouse and keyboard on an Xbox. Yeah, on that's Xbox been a One. discussion since they launched the thing. <laughs> Key, I think keyboards are supported. I think it's the mice that still aren't. Well, you can use a keyboard to type. You can't use a keyboard to control the game. Right. But there has been that discussion of trying to get them included to be used in some games. And I think there's even been some studios out there that have pushed for that to be done for their games. Well, I mean, was it Phil Spencer's teased at it for... <laughs> it seems like every year since the stupid consoles is launched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're still thinking about it. Like, quit thinking about it and do it. Just do it already. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, you know, me personally, I won't be using a keyboard and mouse because my fingers don't work a keyboard. <laughs> they just it just doesn't happen. So yeah. I will continue using my controller. Hey, where are you coming from? Fair enough. But I was gonna you say know, Oops, sorry. There are people out there that do really like having keyboard and mouse. I was going to say that the RTS community is actually pretty big on PC, and unfortunately it hasn't really tapped into console markets yet. I don't think Halo Wars 1 really managed to do that either, but it was it was sort of people for, refer to it as, as baby's first R, uh, RTS. In a way, that's true, but I think it's a good thing. It's, it's really gotten a lot of people introduced to the RTS genre, myself included. Oh yeah, definitely. And they did, they've done an awesome job with the controls. To take something as complicated as an RTS and map it to a controller with the limited amount of buttons that are there and get it to work, that it's truly amazing. I mean, the functionality of playing the game with a controller is just, it's wild. And it seems really intuitive. I mean, you know, when I first started playing Halo, uh, the first Halo Wars, it did not take me long to figure out, okay, this is... This is how it goes. It wasn't as challenging as learning to play a first-person shooter for the first time. Of course, you know, I had a really high threshold there. I started with Halo CE, so there was pretty sharp learning curve there. <laughs> the thing with RTS on console, though, is, is RTS just don't normally perform well because you can't do the actions that you need to really perform on perform RTS level 
strategies on the console. Granted, what Ensemble Studios did with Halo Wars for Xbox was a pretty good adaptation for an RTS to a console. And if you look at it, Halo's been pretty much a pioneer in first-person shooter control schemes. And then you have Halo Wars 2 that kind of came in and kind of did that on the RTS space. Now, I don't see RTS space really making progress on console and as far as you see a lot of other RTS games come to console. But for the fact that a lot of Halo's audience is on Xbox and Halo has an audience for RTSs, yeah, you're going to have people that will still want to play an RTS on a console. But for those that really want to get serious with RTSs, they're going to stay on PC. So I think the the fact that they went back and made Halo Wars available on PC through the Definitive Edition and then had Halo Wars 2 come out on PC for launch, I think that was a good move. I agree. Yeah, definitely was. The only yeah. like big issue I've seen for Halo Wars 2 on PC is really the UI. I've seen a lot of complaints about that. The menu UI and stuff like that. Yeah, there's still some bugs. And they're working through some of the bugs and... I still have the bug of where you click on the mini map and it doesn't actually go there. Jeez. It kind of That's sucks. not a small bug by any by any means. That's, that's pretty big. Well, and the funny thing is I think they they fixed they tried to fix it in a previous patch and it I guess it fixed Didn't some work. some parts on where it happened and some parts where it doesn't. Ouch. I guess. I don't know. All right. So I ran the random number generator and layered came up. I I'm not sure if I think he may already have the full icon set though, so I'm I waiting to see if he responds to the message that I sent him. But we'll wait to see if he responds here. If not, we'll give it away to someone else in the chat. So this is the Atrox figure, unfortunately. I got the rest of them though. Damn. We have a couple other things, and, and one thing we actually s- slipped over because I'm actually going off of the Halo Twitter feed, but there is some weapon tuning. That was also detailed. We've seen a little bit of previews in the past community updates, but we have a little bit more details on some of these specifics that was given by Quinn yesterday on the stream and is summed up in the Odd Ends community update. Uh, The battle rifle was returned to a more original release state. Apparently, some of the changes that they've made over the lifespan of Halo 5 has made it feel random and inconsistent so they've kind of gone back to um, a little bit of what the BR shipped with and they they will have the recoil pulled back to where it was kind of in the original launch version of the game and they'll have a little bit tighter bullet grouping um, than what was experienced during the the test so they kind of I think loosened that during the test so they're going to bring it back in a little bit that's good (laughs) Uh, for the Gunfighter Magnum, they are looking to make it a little bit more competitive in close quarters combat with the SMGs and assault rifles. So you'll be able to actually pull the Gunfighter Magnum out quicker. And it's also getting a boost in damage and accuracy as well. Cool. As far as the short range engagements? Yeah. They didn't say anything about uh, damage fall off at a distance, but. I'm guessing that's something that they've probably taken into account because if it's more accurate, that means that bullet gripping is probably a little bit tighter. It's supposed to be able to be drawn out a lot more quickly um, and then it has a little bit more damage and accuracy boost. The next one up is the railgun. And the tweaks that they've done to that is they made the charge up time longer and the ability to hold that charge time longer. So they they really want the railgun to be a little bit more of a strategic placing of the shot and not be so much of a a quick turnaround and, and shoot. So the the stuff that they've they've done to try to move away from a snapshot kill at close range is to make that charge time longer. But because of that, they made the time that you can hold the charge longer on the back end as well. I wonder how much they've adjusted that. Didn't say specifically, but 
I don't know what a little longer means because the current charge up time is um, I think just under two seconds. Yeah, and the hold the hold time isn't very long at all. No, the hold time is very short. Actually, I think the the charge up time is less than a second, or maybe right around a second. Yeah, maybe second, second and a half, something like that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So maybe it'll be something where it's like a second and a half to two seconds. And then that whole charge is going to be scaled similarly, I would guess. Is this going for like all railgun types in general or just the normal one? Because I know the just whiplash the has been one. a beast in the past. Okay. Just the normal one. Just stuff that's going to be affecting competitive play. Right, right. Yeah, from what I understand, they're not doing any tuning on any of the Warzone weapons. Well, I remember they started factoring them into the arena maps, no? Or is that not for the competitive stuff? That's more for the action uh, side. Yes, this weapon, this weapon tuning is going to affect everything. Campaign, I'm, everything, I'm, I'm including the Warzone, just not the Warzone weapons. Yeah, yeah Not I was, the rec weapons. Yeah. They're, I yeah, rec weapons. They started including them on the maps, right? If I recall correctly. Started yes. seeing rec weapons on arena maps. Okay. So, Laird has not responded. So, we'll go to the next person that came up, which is Pins. There's a Pins mask for you. Uh, Pins, do you... Uh, you may have the whole set, too. Let me know if you have the, the whole set. And if you do, and you don't want another full set, then I can draw another name. So, while he responds, the next one is the Assault Rifle. It's getting an increase to accuracy. And a slight increase to rate of fire, but it's going to have a decreased uh, damage per bullet. That's good. I think that's really going to help focus it down to that close range weapon. So faster rate of fire uh, with increased accuracy, but decreased damage per bullet. So at long range, you'll still have that spread, but you can still have that assisted zoom. So if you pulse it right, you can still probably take people out long range, but it's definitely boosting its close range effectiveness. And Laird just showed up in the chat. <laughs> uh, it was the full set of Halo Icons figures from the first year of the crate. You were listening. Apparently well, we called- you weren't listening too closely. No, we were, we called it out probably five, seven minutes ago. If, if you want it, it's yours. I don't know if you already had the full set. Well, he says dibs, so... Oh, he doesn't? Okay. So it's yours. Congratulations, lady. You got a full set of Halo Icons figures. Woo! Congratulations. Woo-woo! Yay! His pins mask was effective. Thanks, PBL Halo, for the follow. I think that... Isn't that Pro Battle League? Right? I I think that's Pro Battle League. (laughs) <laughs> Vin's now following too. Thank you, Vin. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Vin. No problem. At least I could do. <laughs> Next thing is grenades, which they said they weren't actually able to get into the test that they had up on matchmaking. But they are making a few tweaks to the frag grenades and the splinter grenades. So for the frag grenades, they're reducing the blast radius to help reduce the effect of spamming grenades and that'll also help align the blast radius to what is visually seen with the explosion effects on screen and then for the splinter grenades they're looking to um, reduce the direct burst damage the thing that does the damage when it initially um, explodes they're looking to reduce that damage to make sure it fits more of that area of denial roll which I think is good. But Sounds good to me. I do like throwing a splinter grenade at somebody and seeing it blow up right in their face and they die. True. I hope if you get a direct hit with with someone, it still is an insta kill. But I do think it's a good change to like if it if you throw something on the ground, it's that blast if they're close shouldn't kill them. It should be the the little splinter things that are out there floating floating around. And all of these weapon tunes will come out with the Overtime content update, that's the one that's coming out in November, which includes the Xbox One X 4K content update. They also have the Relief and Recovery Rec Pack, which has been available since last week. 
this is a rec pack that they're using to give all proceeds to global giving to help the recovery efforts of uh, Puerto Rico. And as of the stream yesterday, they had received over $150,000 just from rec point purchases. Cool. A rec pack purchases. And I bought five packs. I have to give a shout out to Penn's Halo. He uh, gifted me one of those packs. So thank you very much, Pens. I did you open it on those? stream last week. Yeah, they're giftable. Oh. oh, okay. I didn't know that. I might give I some of mine any, then. Yeah, I think the anything, uh, the gold packs and up, if you pay money for them, they're giftable. So are silver packs giftable? <laughs> no, gold packs and up. Okay. Well, that's cool. They want that big dollars to be giftable. But anyway. Gotcha. And the piece of art they included for it was gorgeous, too, just for the record. With the, uh, the Spartans, I, I forget what the actual... For the, for the Relief and Recovery rec pack, that image they drew up. Wait, what about the image? I was saying it looks, it's beautiful looking. Oh, like, yes. Awesome. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't worry. Oh, they did a great job with it. They have a really good art team over there. Uh, so that's the weapon tuning. And then the last thing I think that we haven't quite covered yet is they announced the theme for the next Halo Legendary crate. Yes. Which is now for sale. And you can get that through December 15th. And it is all Halo 3. Which I know Haas is excited for. It is called The Great Journey. And once again with the art, beautiful, beautiful pieces. I, I love all the loot crate posters. They're amazing. They, again, they do really a nice. really good job with those. There, there's so much good artwork that they, they produce for some of these things. Yeah. Hey, Raku, thanks for the follow. The, the rest of the stuff we've... I mean, there, there's a couple other smaller things that we haven't touched on. But for the most part, we, we covered everything. A lot of great stuff that came out of the stream yesterday. A lot of things I think people are excited for as far as the local server for Halo 5 and the big one being the Master Chief Collection will be getting a fix and an update for Xbox One X. And uh, this is actually something else that wasn't particular to the update, but Halo did tweet this out earlier on. But issue three of Rise of Atriox is now available from Dark Horse Comics. So you can go check that out. So what do you think, guys? Overall, the the stream content? Oh, very impressed. Same. I could not have walked away happier. I was very surprised when Bonnie started talking about MCC. And I think so was everyone else. It was just like, wait, you're doing what? Like, you've talked nothing about this game for the past year, year and a half. And all of a sudden, you're saying we're going to fix stuff with it? Are you mad? <laughs> I mean, they honestly could have been researching it for that long. They could whatever the fix is, is not going to be an easy fix. No, no. And I mean, a good chunk of their team is focused on, well, Halo six. Now, um, Halo Wars two, Halo five. So that's, you have Halo six being the main big, big project. You have Halo five and Halo two. that are kind of just on the support role. Then MCC has been kind of the the one in the back corner that's just been the redheaded stepchild. Yeah. Are we counting Halo Recruit in this lineup too? Or so Halo Recruit has been done by a separate team, and that was actually kind of not well, yeah, another studio came in to, to work that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm just trying to like because I I didn't I didn't think we talked about it yet, so I was like trying to bring that up as like a potential topic, because that was something they talked about on the live stream. And in the update. So we talked about that on the podcast two episodes ago oh, when they okay. originally announced it. I see. Yeah. And I did get a chance to experience it at PAX West. How was and it? It was a lot of fun. There were still a couple of things that they were working on for the assets in the game. There's still a couple things that they were putting into place but overall it was a really fun experience and i highly recommend if you have a microsoft store close to you that you check it out um or if you do have a vr headset you can download it for free from the microsoft store and you can 
play it from the comfort of your own home. Provided you have the appropriate gear. Right. Well, that's why I mean, if you have the VR headset to to handle it. And I have to admit, they've gotten to be a lot more reasonable. What, with the VR headsets? Yes. Well, and there are other Microsoft ones that... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, the, you don't have to buy an Oculus Rift or, you know, one of the $1,200 headsets to experience this. They make headsets in the, th- the three to $500 range that will handle it just fine. I mean, yeah, you don't get all the features of, you know, the $1,000 headsets, but it will work. Well, and then there's five of them that are officially partnered with Microsoft that are the cheap Windows VR experience headsets. And then you, if you have an Oculus or a Vive or a HoloLens, you can use those as well. Those are obviously on the higher end as far as headsets go. But if you want a cheaper option, and I don't know what that's going to do for the market as far as other VR experiences. I don't know if that would work with YouTube 360 or Facebook 360 or whatever, something like that. But there's potential for some other applications out there, especially if through getting these cheaper headsets out to more consumers, being able to support those or be in companies' interests to get that audience on board with other things. Well, I mean, with this Halo Recruit thing, it's got me thinking. I may be picking up a VR headset sooner than later. Uh, am I going to run out and buy it next week? No. Put on, put on the Christmas wish list. It could be on the list of things to get, yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially with the Xbox One X coming out. That, I mean, with oh, the power that, that it drives, it has the capability yeah. of running VR. You just made a really interesting connection. Even though Phil says they're not talking about VR right now. Oh, but the potential As far as there. the Xbox One X. Yeah, but the potential has to be there now. It has oh, it, to. It, it was part of the equation. I'm sure it was. <laughs> it has to be there now. I mean, with the head of steam VR has right now, it had to be at least considered when they were designing that the Xbox One X. Or the cooler name, Scorpio. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, Scorpio is good cool name yeah i'm not even sure if i can do vr yet so (laughs) you know i I probably actually want to go experience me before i dump four hundred dollars into a headset go check those system requirements man (laughs) no i meant me physically oh gotcha i mean i don't get motion sickness vr is kind of a different realm it is and I really don't want to be tossing my cookies all over my desk. <laughs> well, just keep them in the jar. Yeah. Not keep them in the stomach. But anyway. Or that too. <laughs> so that's all the news that we have for tonight. It's been quite a ride of awesome content. Some really cool things coming down the pipeline for Halo. And I think the community overall is really happy right now. I agree. I do have to uh, mention uh, one more one more thing. This was in the update. I have to admit, someone has come up with the coolest marriage video game marriage proposal I think I've ever seen. Was this the one that was the Forge map in Halo? Yes. This guy commissioned, well, built a Forge a Forge puzzle map to propose to his girlfriend. Oh, really? And then made her play it. <laughs> uh, apparently, this was this took a while because there were a few edits in the video. <laughs> but he literally made her go through this puzzle map to unlock the proposal. And don't get me wrong; he helped her out along the way. He didn't just say here, figure it out. He 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 went through and did actually help her uh, get through some of the harder parts, but. Yeah, I thought that was cool. And it was personal. That's adorable. That really is. I mean, you know, he he did some of the forging and he had uh, one other forger help him create the different puzzles and things like that. I probably would never make it through the stupid thing. 
because <laughs> I, wa- I watched the video and I'm like, but I- I'm not good with puzzle maps, but I just thought that was cool. And, you know, I've heard of some cool video game proposals, but I think that that's the coolest one I've seen so far. I, I, I was not that nerdy in my proposal. And I think my fiance thanks me for that, but it is a cool idea. Well, I don't see her dancing around in the background, so no, she's probably napping over there. There's a lot of cool things that have been done as far as Halo proposals, though. And I mean, with how intricate Forge is now, there's probably going to be a lot more crazy stuff that we'll probably see in the future. (laughs) At least it would not surprise me. So a couple of community updates. As everyone that's on the live stream is aware, we are now only streaming on Mixer for our podcasts. We're still going to be using Twitch for game nights and other game streams that we'll be doing. So we're not getting away from that. But from a podcast perspective, because Mixer has the FTL, uh, the pretty much instant uh, stream to chat response time, we are looking to use that for our more interactive feedback. So make sure you're following us on Mixer, uh, mixer.com slash podtacular. And we are still keeping the same time and place. We had to change it up this week a little bit because I had to work late last night. I actually have to work late again tomorrow and on Friday. So this week has been quite a interesting week so far. Oh, and we also didn't want to go up against the HCS. That as well. <laughs> it was good to sit back and digest our food before we decided to just gobble it down and gobbled it. We did lots of good stuff, but this is going to be the same time Tuesdays at 9 PM Eastern time on mixer. Our other scheduled streams are still going to be the same. So fragment Fridays are going to be eight 30 on Friday. That'll, that'll still be mixer and Twitch. And then I try to stream on Sundays when I can at 10 PM Eastern time. And we'll, slowly work a few more into those as our time permits. And I think Confal has his Spartan Saturdays on Saturdays. I don't think he streams those. Maybe I'll give him access to stream those. Confal, get in touch with me. No, I think he's been pushing them out on his own channel. Okay. Well, if he wants to put them out on Podtacular, he just send, send me a message, Confal. We can, we can chat. I think he's still in here. If not, I can follow. He him. was a few minutes ago. I haven't seen him type something in a while. There he is. There he is. Oh, he says he hasn't been doing it. Well, he, he's been building a PC, but... Oh, okay. We also have our Spartan company doing a quick little commendation update. Our closest level four is killing enemy Spartan with a ground vehicle. We have 13 396 out of 14 400, so we are... 1,004 away from getting that commendation. The one that we have furthest in the back is Killing Marines. We have 15,098 out of 19,200. So we are 4,102 away from that one. The closest level 5 that we have to completing is Killing killing an Enemy Spartan with a Ground Pound. We have 4,145 out of 4,900. So that means we have another 755 of those to go. We still have some spots in our Spartan company. So if you're interested in joining, head on over to podtacular.com slash company and send us a request to enlist and we will get you on the team. We are still hunting that helmet. At this rate, hopefully we'll have it before Halo 6 comes out. But we'll see. (laughs) Well, we're... Currently, probably at least 12 months away-ish. I'd say at least a year. Yeah, so we we'll, we should be getting close. I, I'm guessing by then we'll probably have maybe six or seven outstanding or at least close. We should get Eric Kibu to join our company. <laughs> hey, can you come in and help us finish this? <laughs> yeah, you're on all the time. You can help our stats, right? <laughs> you got 20 hours a day you play anyway. You might as well. Right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next update that we have is we are going to be releasing our podcasts on YouTube. Starting back from the first episode, by the end of the year, we should have the entire what I'm going to call first season 
up on YouTube. That is episodes 1 through 158. The whole time that Fumo Jive was the host of the podcast. I uh, did some uh, messing around with After Effects and got a cool little audio spectrum effect going in there. So we're going to be exporting those and you should start seeing the first few episodes come up onto the channel this weekend. And we'll be just releasing those and turning them out as we get them going. So if you see a whole slew of releases coming from our channel, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> there will It's just another way for us to get the podcast out there in a consumable format. And we're hoping that people uh, like the, the format that we came up with as far as the visuals for the video. And it's just going to be the, the straight podcast audio up on YouTube. You can still download the episodes through the website. That's not going to change. You still have the MP3s that you can go back and download. But for anyone that wants to do it through YouTube, we're just going to put that up there as an option for people to consume it that way. And it's also something if you want to put something on a TV in the background, at least has something to put on the screen. Yeah, you're going to be putting them in a playlist too? Yes, they will be in the playlist. Excellent. Again, all the episodes are still currently available. You just go to the website and go un- under the podcast section and you can find every podcast that's been released. The feeds only do the last 10, so it's not completely crowded. But you can go back and check out every single podcast that we've done so far on the website. And those will slowly be rolled out to the YouTube channel as we can get those turned out. And as you've seen... For those that are on the stream, we've made a few updates to the stream layout. We're going to keep on making a few more updates over the next couple of weeks till we get a stream layout ironed out. Um, if there's anyone that's good with uh, doing stream lay- layouts that would like to help out, then certainly get in touch with uh, me or Godzilla. We would love to have your skills and expertise to help us out a little bit. But until then, I'm just going to kind of stumble through but I know of After Effects and or not After Effects Photoshop and maybe kind of stumble through Illustrator a little bit and kind of design something up. We're going to just keep on pressing forward with making some small changes. Eventually we'll get a website update at some point, but we're just kind of making some small changes as, as time permits. And we hope you guys enjoy the changes. Feel free to give us feedback over Twitter, Facebook, wherever that we, that you can reach us. Big thing would be if you can come join the live streams. That would be the best way to help out and get other people to come in and just listen to what's for what we're talking about, and what's going on in the show. Not sure what we're going to be doing next week as we probably just got a major news dump. We'll be talking about the results of um, DreamHack Denver, but in addition to that, not sure what we're going to be doing yet. Although within the next month or so, we'll probably be doing another book episode. And I think down the road where we want to have Jeremy on who was part of us in justice before he joined the 343 team. He was the one that kind of gave us uh, the brief of some of the uh, Halo stuff that you may have seen Hidden Experian Toa Freak post shortly after PAX West. Some additional information that came out about kind of a Halo array. And we want to have him on the show just to talk about his time at Ascendant Justice before they got brought on to work for 343. And that's kind of a, a lore related show. And I know there's been a lot of people that have been wanting to do lore stuff and no pins. Again, Halsey Journal will be a while off. <laughs> um, yes, Eric, he was vociferous. And there will be a couple other book shows, maybe two by the end of the year, at least one. And then there's more books that I need to go through and read, but we'll get to those eventually. That's going to be it for us tonight. Thanks everyone for tuning into our 600th episode. If we kept on the calendar, this would have been done four months ago, but we made it to 600, which is a pretty good milestone for, for us. Here's to another 400 more to get to a thousand. We'll get to 750 first, but, That'll be in a little under three years' time. 
Make sure you check out the Podcast Network. We're part of a network of gaming-specific shows, which includes Guardian Radio, Crits Cast, The Learning Cliff, Podcast 76, Work in Progress, and How to Murder Time. You can find out more about the Podcast Network over at thepodcast.com. Also, make sure you check out our other social media platforms. We are on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Xbox Club, Spartan Company, and wherever else that you can find us with Podtacular. Make sure you go check out our social media networks and be subscribed and tuned in to all of our updates and where we are posting. GT, when is the next Achieving Halo scheduled to record? I hope to be able to do it do a recording um, next Saturday uh, let's see what is it uh, the 28th kind of depends on what what happens between now and then but keep your eye up on the Xbox Club I will post uh, time and date then and if there are anybody if there is anybody that is interested in doing one and the time listed on the post or the looking for group is not good for you, send me a message and I may be able to work things around. If I can get enough people that are interested in the same rough time, then I might be able to do, do something to accommodate you folks. Sounds good. Thanks everyone for tuning in. That has been episode 600. And from here on out, we move on. Yeah. Ben, thanks for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure having you on. Thanks for having me. Thank you for the constant updates to the blog and staying on top of the community updates. I appreciate it. I know the community appreciates it. Oh, man. Thanks. Thank you guys for giving me a voice. I, uh, I, I've i really admired other writers in, in the Halo community, like uh, Lord Tarkom, who works for Windows Central, and Her Respects of Hell, Her Respects, all the other amazing Halo writers. So it's great to have a platform to project myself, and I appreciate that you guys are the platform I can do that on. So thank you. Well, we are pleased to have you, and thank you for keeping up the excellent work on the blog. So make sure you check him out on Twitter and give him props for the articles that he's been doing such a wonderful job writing. And until then, keep on fragging them trucks. Trucks.